Hello, everyone. Welcome to Rob's Gaming Table. I'm Rob. Surprise, surprise. Uh, hello. Welcome. Welcome joining live. Hello, hello, hello. Hello to you watching later. Uh, today we're doing something we don't normally do on the channel too often, but we are doing an unboxing uh, because I felt like this one, uh, this one uh, needed it. This one needed it. So uh, we're here to do a live unboxing of the Arkham Horror, the card game revised core set. So if you're new to Arkham Horror or new to Arkham Horror, the card game, this is a perfect spot for you to start. Uh, and then you can check the playlist down below for lots of playlist links on how to play with the core set, including hopefully next week, uh, I plan to do a playthrough uh, using this revised core set. I'm gonna play some solo, uh, which I was going to do this week. Uh, this thing did come out on October 1st. Uh, here in Canada, uh, and I didn't realize it was coming out so quickly. So I placed an online order uh, on Friday of last week. I was hoping to get it early this week, but uh, the store I ordered from has done for the third time in a row. Uh, they say they'll ship out your order in one to three business days, uh, but they've never done it in less than five. So I'm going to stop ordering from there. Uh, and uh, yeah, because I just got this today, a couple hours ago. So that's why I'm doing a live unboxing today and not like on Tuesday when I was hoping to do it if I ordered it from a couple other stores I order from that are usually pretty quick getting their orders out the door. Uh, yeah, no, nobody in my city had it yet, so I don't know if they, if they got it this week or not, but uh, anyways, we're here, we're gonna unbox it live. Uh, we're gonna compare it to the regular core set in some ways, see what's different uh, for those that, you know, maybe you're on the fence or like, should I buy a existing core set that are all getting discounted at my local game store? Or should I, you know, buy a used first core set from five years ago or not? Um, but we're going to talk about all that stuff, what's in it, uh, and take a look at it. All I've done is take the shrink wrap off. I have not opened it yet. So, uh, yeah, you're going to get my reactions, of course, live. Uh, so it should be pretty fun. Hello, everyone in the chat. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, oh, yeah, I saw the pop-ups. Uh, Dan Uzo, thank you for being a member here on YouTube for three months now. Thank you for the ongoing support. Much appreciated. And uh, Jason Scarrow, thank you for subscribing today. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And of course, thank you to all the uh, patrons and existing YouTube members uh, that you see scrolling on the screen there. Thank you for supporting the channel uh, and keeping us going here, of course. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, or else, uh, if you weren't, maybe I wouldn't be buying revised core sets when I already own all the cards that are in it probably more copies than i think i have like four core sets worth of cards uh original core sets <laughs> so i definitely don't need this box but i figured i'd open it i want to i want to come at it from a new player's perspective i only got into this game like within the last year so i'm still kind of noobish to it i haven't played through all the stuff in the game but i've played it a bunch on the channel as i said check out the playlist link you can see my wife and i and our kind of live uh, progression through the content that exists for this game over the last five years. Uh, but we're going to rewind and kind of start it again from this revised core set for new players to kind of see uh, that experience, what's involved there. So like I said, next week I plan to uh, play through a solo campaign using just cards from the revised core set. You guys can play along with me, figure out upgrades and stuff as we go. And then I eventually will play with an, another solo uh, run through with the return to Knight of the Zealot mixed in with this and we'll make the deck with a bunch of different cards Thanks Yogi for the deck by the way, and then we'll play that uh, in hopefully the following week. So that's the plan That is the plan. All right uh, So let's talk about what this is if for you're like what the heck like I, I already play this game or I, I've heard of this game But like what what is this you're talking about? What are you unboxing today? So I'm gonna give you some info on this uh, if I can do this correctly here Let's see Let's see if I can do this. All right, let's see. All right. So this is all you need to know. Uh, old and busted. New hotness. Okay. Okay. Everyone, everyone say it with me. Old and old and busted. New hotness. Okay. That's all you need to know. You're good. You can go now. <laughs> you can go now. It's, that's all you need to know. That's all you need to know. But if you do want more info, all right, here, here's what I gathered uh, based on what we saw when it was announced earlier this year and uh, what, I, what I, my Google Foo could find for me. 
Uh, so this is a revision to the existing core set from five years ago, almost five. It's like a month shy of, of when it released, I believe, uh, sometime in quarter four, 2019, depending on where you live, of course, could be an earlier or later, or if you went to like Arkham Knights that, that year and got like an early copy. Uh, it ha it's an improved, it's, it, FFG is saying on their article, I saw it says, the perfect uh, entry point for a new player. But that, I don't know, those words aren't really 100% accurate because if your buddy already owns like the whole collection, it's, it's not a new player's best entry into the game. Maybe buying an investigator starter deck is your best entry into the game. So anyways, they say it's a perfect entry for a new player. Eh, it's an improved entry point for a new player over the, exi the existing core set. But again, depending on your situation, if you're just playing with, you know, a friend's, a friend's copy or whatever, maybe the best entry point is you, him just building your decks, you know, or, or, or she builds your decks and you can play with those. Um, it uh, has supposedly, supposedly, supposedly enough cards and components for four players, four players. But if that's like uh, Fancy Flight Games says, you know, their play mats are one to four players, uh, it may not be enough for four players. So when they say something's enough for four players, uh, don't always trust it, okay? Uh, Unless the four players they're thinking of are like Smurfs or Hobbits or something, maybe that works. Something with mini components, I, I don't know. But anyways, uh, it includes more higher level cards for more upgrade options. So they taken out of some early expansions, they grabbed some cards. I have a list of those cards we can look through in a bit. I found it online uh, from someone else who went through and compared the core sets. But there are some upgrade cards that weren't in the original core set, but they're just pulled from early expansions that came out with the game. So if you already have a core set, you already have all the cards of the game, there's no new new upgrade cards that were added. But if you're coming out of this your very first time, this is your first product, you're going to have different upgrade card options, some extra options than somebody who played a the original core set. Um, you wouldn't have got those upgrade options originally until you bought a bunch of packs. But they threw something in there to kind of beef up the deck building options, probably because now they're trying to give options for four players at the same time, maybe. So uh, they've just added some more in there. Uh, some cards, okay, this bugs me a lot. Uh, some cards, like the investigators, have new artwork. This, uh, I watched a presentation where they kind of explained that it was like they had a chance to like improve some of the art, but they said none of the art was bad that they replaced, but it just gave them an option to like update some cards. But to me, that's like, I don't know. I don't know. There is some improvements, like for gameplay, there's a, an encounter card or two that they upgrade the art to kind of make it more obvious what's going on, but. I don't know, to change investigator art, which was fine in my opinion. Uh, this is kind of like a, like a completionist. Uh, this is a way to get more money out of their bank account that they shouldn't be spending in the first place. I, I just don't like the way they did that. Like, I know they're doing it too, like from the, the idea of like, and they do this for a lot of their games when they do a revised edition, a second edition. Of course, they grab their best art that they have from other games at the time. They improve the graphic design, all that stuff. They take a chance to like fully refresh the game. But it's weird in this one, they just kind of like changed, you know, maybe like 20 cards. But that's still a lot. And, and somebody might be like, well, wait, I want my unexpected courage. I, I want the version with this art on it instead of that one. And, you know, it, it, people might be buying these cards again just because they changed the art. So I don't know if they did that. You know, there's kind of like the financial reasons to do that. So people collect them and want the alternate art, you know, uh, investigators and alternate art player cards and stuff. But I don't know, I was a little bugged by that one, but... For someone new to the game, that's awesome. Give them, give them the best art you got, I guess. Uh, cards are packaged logically. So the big joke that totally went over my head when we were first playing, because I didn't have this problem, but supposedly when the core sets came out, every new player gets the game, they go online and they go, where the hell is Lita Chandler? Because she's a player card, but she's supposed to be part of a, a scenario, and she's included with the player cards, and the old cards were not packaged very well to build decks and stuff. There's a lot of work. Yeah, I, I went through it like a year ago, I had to set it all up. You pull out the cards, it's just two big like bags full of cards, all the player cards, all the scenario cards, and yet a lot of sorting and figuring out what's what as you're trying to get through it. Uh, supposedly this is improved. The players have pre-built decks, they're already packaged together, the scenarios are already packaged together. Uh, so you just rip the plastic off of this first scenario you're playing. You don't need to even touch the other cards that are mixed in with the other scenario. Uh, I think that's super smart. It gets the game to the table much faster uh, your first time when you're learning it and playing it, uh, which I think is awesome. Um, yeah, makes the game actually possible to like buy and crack out at a convention and like learn it and play it uh, versus before where you'd be like, uh, I'm just going to take tonight and uh, sort it all out and then maybe we can play tomorrow. 
Uh, so the, there are also additional tokens. They added some numbered resource and clue threat tokens. So instead of just all being ones, there's like threes and fives probably and stuff like that. We've seen that in other Arkham games. They have a lead investigator token. Um, most importantly though, most importantly, they've included an opaque container. So Fantasy Flight Games, the publishers of the game, every Arkham game I seem to buy says you need to take monster tokens or mythos tokens or fill in the blank, whatever kind of tokens, and you put them in an opaque container, like a bag or a mug. And then you draw from them, okay? But we all know like Fantasy Flight Games, they don't put enough dice, don't put enough tokens in their games, they're known for this. But then magically they'll also release a pack of tokens or dice or you know stuff like that on the side that you can buy play mats all this all this upsell kind of stuff well they were doing the same thing with these games saying you know you needed a bag but it, it, they offered a whole line of bags that you know they make for like pennies that they could have included uh which i rant about all the time so th this is super funny when they're like they were revising the core set i i said if they don't put a bag in there like i'm gonna riot but supposedly they did Supposedly they reached out to their suppliers, you know, the way they get their bags, and they got they put a Mythos bag in here, uh, which is huge. That's huge. That's basically why I bought this, to get a Mythos bag. Most expensive little dice bag I've ever bought, I'm sure. Um, but yeah. Uh, threat tokens. Uh, it's just the other side. Is it like Doom? Is Doom threat on the other side of the clues, right? It's just like on one side you have... Yeah, isn't it called Doom? But yeah, it said threat in their article, so I just put threat. But I assume that's what it is. Unless they're calling them different now in the revised core set, or the marketing person who typed up the, the contents of the box I was reading uh, maybe typed it wrong. But yeah, I think it's supposed to be Doom tokens. But yeah, good question. <laughs> oh, I see Flip saying, uh, the old and busted. Are you saying you couldn't find Lita? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, opaque container, opaque container, uh, which is in all the rule books I read for these games, uh, is now included. So hopefully in Arkham Horror, the board game 4th edition, we'll get a opaque container and, uh, you know, in, uh, Eldritch Horror and, uh, Elder Sign. You know, there's Elder Sign Revised Edition, it doesn't have a bag, but maybe Elder Sign Revised Revised Edition, they'll give you an opaque container for the monster tokens and stuff. Uh, we'll see. So this is a good step forward. Uh, it's weird that they only did it for this product. I, I don't know what what changed their minds to finally include a bag. Um, but it wasn't my 100 angry emails. It definitely wasn't me. Um, but yeah. And Flip says, I thought maybe he was just that excited about the new revised LOTR LCG course set. Oh, no, I seriously, I copied this right from uh, their article. I, I saw a clue slash threat. I'm pretty sure. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> but good catch. Good catch, though. Uh, let's see if I can... Let's see if I can find it. Uh, whatever. Yeah, there was, like, an article they announced it in, and I was, like, reading that this morning, and... Anyways. So, yeah, I think it's supposed to... I think maybe the marketing person just put it wrong, but it should be Doom. Unless I typed that out, but I don't think I would. Uh, but I'll, de I'll definitely be getting the revised Lord of the Rings course on the channel now that you mentioned that. So stay tuned for that. Hit that subscribe button. That'll definitely go on the channel. Uh, and so, again, let's just, uh, what you need to know, so I can sum all of this up. Uh, and sum all this up right here. Okay? This is all you need to know. That's all you need to know. Okay? Just summed up right there. All right, so hopefully that makes sense for those who uh, images more than text or, you know, that kind of stuff. Ho hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, one thing I want to say, though, related to that. Uh, this is not truly old and busted. Uh, if you can find this for a good deal, you just need two of them. Okay, they didn't include, again, based on the, you know, not including enough dice not including uh, opaque containers uh, or tokens or all that stuff, you know, find a suitable replacement. Uh, this core set does not include enough cards for four players or really enough cards for one player to build full decks with three of each card in them. Uh, so you kind of need to buy two of these 
and then throw like 75% of it in the recycle bin, uh, which is unfortunate. It's kind of sad the way Fancy Flight Games used to, to run their stuff. Uh, they're getting a little better with it, but there's still improvements needed. So it's not old and busted, but there, there are people who are selling their core sets who just you know bought one or two. There's people who are selling whole collections all the time. If you're looking to dive into this game, you've tried it or you know it's for you. Um, yeah, so you can still get these. You still get the same cards. It's just different art on them. Some different tokens. We'll look at those here and figure out what's different. Just so you guys know, if you like see some of this, you know, on sale secondhand, uh, you're still fine. You're still fine. And yes, you can get a Mythos bag out there. There's tons of them. You can use a mug, all that stuff. I'm just joking. But uh, yeah, yeah. So if, if this makes more financial sense, you don't need to buy this. But if this is easier to get, you want to support your local game store, you know, maybe they have these on sale at your local game store. You still get these new uh, discounted. Who knows, right? Uh, but we're just comparing what's going on here. That's all. That's all. Uh, it's not truly old and busted. I'm just trying to be silly. All right. Uh, so, uh, any questions? Any questions? Oh, hey, Dan. Uh, I'm in a meeting and I have you on mute. Can you just nod if I should buy this? Thanks. <laughs> no, not you, Dan. I know you probably have all this stuff, yeah? Unless you don't have the game at all, but I think you have it all. I know you have all the Lord of the Rings stuff. I just don't remember if you have all the Arkham stuff. Should have photoshopped your head onto the guy's head. Listen, Cinegamer, listen, I only had so much time today. Literally, I didn't even know I was getting this today until I got the out of uh, out for delivery notification this morning because uh, I, I didn't check and uh, it, it came like literally an hour later. So I was kind of scrambling, trying to put everything together. So. <laughs> I was hoping to be playing today, but uh, I wanted to do this unboxing too. Uh, so we'll, we'll just play next week. Uh, that's the plan. Flip says, uh, I got my buddy into this game and he picked up this new setup. It is a nice set. Well, we're about to find out. Quit spoiling things. We're going to open it now. Billy says, I'll put the tokens in the old box and use the old box as my myth as a mythos cup. <laughs> yeah. So this revised core set came out October 1st in select markets, supposedly. So it's out in stores now. It's been out there for about a week. Um, I already took off the shrink wrap. I have not opened it. I just took off the shrink wrap because of glare and st stuff like that. So um, no art inside the box. Okay. Unfortunately, chip theory spoiled me. Uh, all right. Oh, oh, our learn to play guide is uh, now like a larger book uh, with different art on the front. Uh, I should have, uh, got the old book, uh, because I'm sure that you had to rework this, uh, based on size and stuff. And I wonder if they, yes, yes, this rule book is different. Uh, this learn to play is different, uh, cause it actually has to be right to kind of work in the new card art and, uh, the new tokens and stuff. Yeah. Look, uh, Roland's here. Uh, okay. Okay, yeah, uh, so, uh, oh, spoilers, yeah, there's that Mythos bag. Yeah, this is, uh, they like reworked it like the uh, Marvel Champions uh, learned to play, it looks like, if my memory serves me correctly. Uh, yeah, so they definitely uh, took what they've learned, uh, and they've organized it, you know, with, uh, in the last five years, they've obviously kind of improved getting into these LCGs with the learn to play guides and stuff. Uh, so, yeah, they took the time to actually put some work into this and update this. Hopefully it's not full of errata. Hopefully they corrected all the errata and that kind of stuff. Um, and hopefully the rules reference is actually updated. That'd be amazing. Or, yeah, it is included. But if they didn't update the rules reference and there's still the FAQs referring to like the same pages and stuff, I'm going to lose my mind. Because that's the one thing. FFG like reprints the same items over and over again, but they very rarely ever like fix cards and books and stuff uh, and new printings. I, I'm, actually, they do fix cards. Um, but usually they don't touch the rule books, which is super weird. They just keep printing the same junk over and over again. I think Mel's bringing me a rule book. Yeah, uh, I forgot. Thank you. Thank you, a lovely assistant. Uh, so, so here's my accordion folder full of Arkham, uh, you know, documents from all the expansions. Let me just, uh, yeah, let me just search through it and find what I need. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there we go. So there's the existing, uh, or the uh, previous rules reference and learn to play guide. So we can kind of take a peek. We can kind of take a peek. I, I'm a nerd with this stuff, like rules. I, 
sometimes spend more time in a rule book I feel than playing some games, so uh, I kind of bond with the rule books really. Um, but yeah, not in this game so much. I uh, LCGs usually I just kind of read at the beginning and then kind of just wing it as I go. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but yeah. First game setup. Yeah, see, like, l less pictures, less obvious, less borders, less graphics, that kind of stuff. I mean, the other one's still nice. It still works. But this is like, uh, this reminds me of, like, you know, 2011, 2012 kind of uh, um, fancy flight games rule books mixed with, like, the kind of learn to plays that we saw earlier when they started doing that. Um, so that's the existing one. Obviously smaller. Uh, this one, they have more real estate in the book. Uh, and you know, they kind of made it like, you know, a little more spread out like this kind of stuff. I love this stuff Like it just breaks things down into visual chunks, you know, as you step through it makes sense Got you know, the nice arrows kind of showing you things. Uh, I like that. It just helps, right? Some people are more visual and when they see a wall of text, they kind of just start to fall asleep instantly uh, So it's good to kind of break it up and make it a little more exciting on the page um, And the back Looks like they have the same same reference same reference, but the book is a little bigger. They, they expanded it. Uh, and it's actually 24 pages versus only 16. So you think a larger book would be less pages, but it just shows that they actually spread out, put more information, uh, expanded the images, you know, put more images and stuff in there, uh, which I like. So uh, they took, they put some work in that. Uh, I didn't expect that. I did not expect them to put so much work in that. Um, okay. Oh, the rules reference feels nice, thick. Oh, well, this one's kind of thick too. Uh, 32 pages in the old rules reference. Okay, the new one, 32 pages. Okay, maybe they didn't put any work in this. Oh, I'm a little worried actually. But they might have tried to keep it the same page numbers. So the FAQ, uh, when it references errata and stuff. But I hope, uh, please tell me you fixed errata. Please tell me. Please tell me. Uh, can we check an errata? Can we check? Do I have the FAQ nearby? Let's see. I'm curious. I just want to see. Uh, I, I, this is the stuff I care about. I'm sorry, guys. We'll get to the cards and the token shortly, I promise. Uh, let's see here. FAQ. I have FAQ version 19.1 uh, downloaded already. So I'll just open that one because I'm assuming it's like the same. So I'm just looking at the errata online, just out of curiosity. Uh, notes and errata. So rule book errata. Rules reference, page seven, column one, costs. The third bullet point should read, when a player is exhausting, sacrificing. Okay, let's see if it says this under the player's control thing here. Because uh, if it doesn't, they're losers. Big losers. Uh, okay. Costs. Okay, let's see. Costs. Uh, page seven, column one, cost. Third bullet point. Well, the third bullet point is now in column two. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> the third bullet point is now in officially column two, so there is some, uh, there is some additional text. There has to be, right? Uh, to make it, uh, you know, kind of spread out more. Uh, under that player's control, maybe use. Yeah, it is updated. It is updated. At least that one is. Okay, let's check one more. Let's check one more. Let's go to a random one here. Uh, let's do this permanent. So page 16, column two. Page 16, column two. Uh, permanent, right here. Okay, I'm gonna check permanent. The fourth bullet point, one, two, three, four is the last one. Should say cannot and then leave play except by elimination. Yes, yes, we're updated. Yes, my rules reference is officially better than yours. Yes, all right, good job, FFG. Now keep this updated when you print this core set again in like six months. Take the time to update the damn book, lazy buggers. But, anyways, they won't do that, they'll just make FAQ revised FAQ. 
Uh, to fix her rata from here. Anyways. <laughs> Aaron says, I just bought the regular corset. My wallet is not ready. So sell that corset to someone else and buy this one if you need cards for four players. <laughs> and a cool Mythos bag. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know the verdict here. You make the decisions yourself. I'm not going to tell you which one to buy. Uh, okay. Uh, David's asking... Yeah, I answered your question the other day on stream, David. I think you came in the chat and then like left a message and ran away. Uh, but he says, when are you playing Arkham LCG with Mel again? Uh, when we get the Edge of the Earth content. Like I said in many, many of our previous playthroughs, uh, we were putting Arkham on hold until we... Two-player on hold until we got the Edge of the Earth stuff. Uh, but then this revised course that I decided to get it after all. So I'm going to play this solo, play a little solo campaign of Arkham Horror uh, probably next week. And then the following week, I'm going to play that campaign again uh, using the full card pool and using the Return to Night of the Zealot and uh, play it again just to see how the two campaigns are kind of different when you throw the Return to stuff in, which I've never played. Uh, so yeah, if you want to see this played from only stuff in this box, uh, subscribe. Next week I will be playing with this. Uh, we'll do a little solo playthrough. Everyone can join in. Uh, if you're new, you can come and watch. We'll explain how kind of things work. Um, and that's the plan, at least. Uh, so stay tuned to the channel. That'll pop up uh, in the upcoming live streams uh, shortly. I just got to figure out the day. Um, but yeah. <laughs> David says, thank you. I'm so subscribed now. Yeah, yeah. We're definitely coming back with more Arkham. Uh, but David, I know you mentioned the uh, last two campaigns we have not played. We have not played uh, Innsmouth Conspiracy or Dream Eaters yet. Uh, and that's just because they didn't win a poll and we only were going to play one more campaign before diving into the new stuff. But, but we will definitely play those in the future. I have it all. We'll play them. Uh, so we're just going to play some things out of order uh, just to see how that goes. But that's, that's what we're going to do. All right. So we have a little campaign guide. Not so little anymore. Because the other campaign guide. Let's uh, check our little folder here. Where is the other campaign guide? Oh, no. Maybe that's missing. I don't know if I have that, actually, but that's okay. That's okay. Yeah, I, I don't think I have it in my little folder. I don't know where it went. I probably have four of them, like I said. I probably have four of those little campaign guides rolling around. But they're just small like this one. They're just like like the old... Uh, actually, they're smaller. They're smaller. Um, so this one's a little bigger. It actually has staples. I don't know if the other one did, but this one actually stapled. Uh, sometimes they're just like fold-out sheets in this game. Uh, I won't hold it too close. There's spoilers. Spoilers. Oh my god. I found Lita. I found Lita. She, I found her without even opening cards. You guys, I don't know how anyone couldn't find her before. Uh, so anyways, yep. So we got a little campaign book here. Nice art in it. And yeah, it's now a full size, like, it looks like 8.5 by 11. And this box feels like the size of the Marvel Champions box. Uh, for those that have that and want to reference it to, like, uh, the previous core set. Oh, oh, now I know why they revised the corset. They're trying to advertise to you to buy Unfathomable. It all makes sense now. Yeah, where's my little catalog, FFG? You don't make those anymore? Where's my little uh, fall of 2021 catalog with all your games in it? I love those little things. Oh, there's uh, Arcanite Books, who now, who now do the books for the Arkham series. Arcanite's another uh, studio publishing house under Asmodee. They have now taken over all the books and, uh, and novellas and that kind of stuff, is my understanding. Uh, so they're, this is some of the stuff they're working on, I guess. Dive deeper into the supernatural terror with this thrilling new range of Arkham Horror novels. So check out ArkhamNightBooks.com. Not sponsored. All right. Uh, so yeah, if you guys want to know about Unfathomable, uh, that actually came in the same order that this box came in. So stay tuned. Stay tuned. We'll be playing that at some point, hopefully in the future. All right, now the good stuff. We're getting into tokens. Uh, so already the token sheets take up the full box. They feel bigger, but good thing. I still have wrapped, but I did cut it so I could take them out easier. Uh, I have the tokens from an older core set. So we can kind of see the difference. Uh, no, they're the same. It's just these are making it look bigger. Like they have these big five resource tokens, like I said. They have three fives and then the ones. Um... And yeah, here they have, uh, well, they already had threes of these, the health and the sanity. Oh, here you go. Three doom, three doom right there. 
three doom. And on the other side, once we open it, we'll see the three clues, I'm sure. Uh, but yeah, we'll, we can compare the size, but you can just see them here. They're, it's like roughly the same size. So nothing crazy. This is just a sheet and a half, though, a small sheet and a half. Now we have two full sheets of tokens. So definitely more tokens because you need four players worth of tokens, right? Plus the additional tokens here. So let me uh, try to get this open here. And of course, of course, you got to smell that fresh. Fresh ink and cardboard and chemicals and glue. And if you listen closely, you can hear my brain cells dying. Oh man, those smells. I love it. Anyone else? Come on, raise your hand if you're a freak and you love opening up uh, new new games, video games, the old days with the, the manuals, which got me hooked. When I was a kid, you know, you open those Nintendo games, Super Nintendo games, you crack the manual. Yeah, they used to come with paper booklets inside that wasn't just your warranty information. Uh, but yeah, you gotta, you gotta... Yep, yep, definitely, definitely the classic FFG printing smell. They definitely make these in the same... The same factory that all the games I bought over the last like 10 years uh, is where they print them. I can tell. I can tell you the line in the factory was made on and, and who actually packaged it based on the smell. Because uh, I buy that many damn games. Uh, okay. Just kidding. Just kidding. Uh, so <laughs> I thought they stopped doing this. Uh, but yes, here's a proof of purchase. Here's the proof of purchase. Not that it matters or it's for anything, but uh, just like an ongoing joke, I'm pretty sure. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> So yeah, there's the clues, uh, three clues, or three doom, sorry, no, wait, clues, doom, man, I'm like not with it. Uh, I've been playing a lot of other Arkham games lately, and uh, so some of the terminology may be uh, slipping, uh, as you guys know on the channel, I'm, I'm relearning uh, Elder Sign, Mansion of Madness, we've been playing Arkham Horror 3rd Edition lately, we're playing Mansion of Madness tomorrow actually, I'm pretty sure, and in two days we're playing more Arkham Horror 3rd Edition. So all October, all Arkham, all horror theme games is what the idea is. <laughs> yes, Chris, Stacy, uh, you guys, you guys smelling, smelling the, the fresh cardboard, uh, you know, the paints or the inks and all that stuff. Oh, I love it. Uh, but yeah, yeah, the tokens look the same, same size. I'm pretty sure. So if you have your coin capsules, I, I would assume they wouldn't change the size because people would freak out, right? Uh, so let's just pop a token out of the old sheet. So this is the Old and busted token, and the new token, 100% same size. And same-ish thickness, same-ish thickness. Yeah, same thickness. Will it focus? Yeah, same thickness. So if, if you use like coin capsules to uh, cover these, um, either the same ones will work. Same ones will work, so you don't have to worry. And the the, the, the the contrast and the, the inks and everything, they're the same. They're, they're very similar. Like, there's nothing, no issue, no issue. Uh, I don't know if I can put it back in, but not that I, I need to pop them really. But uh, I will play with this stuff uh, next week. So we'll, we'll start using these, I would assume. Oh, we have custom tokens actually for this game, right? Uh, but yeah, so obviously, like, you could be piling up resources in the future. That's just... It's just a way to give more tokens to play with four player. Uh, so, you know, so you have like, it's not just a bunch of ones, right? That you, you'll run out of. So it's, it's kind of smart. Um, and there's your first player token. Or your lead investigator, sorry, lead investigator token. Lead investigator token. Okay. But other than that, like, I, I, yeah, they're tokens. I, I don't know what to tell you there, but uh, yeah, they're just as thick. Uh, the ink on the art and the printing is just as nice. Um, and yeah, you get a, a, a first player, or a lead investigator token. Why are the chaos tokens in order? That's ironic. <laughs> oh, are they? Are they really? <laughs> I didn't even think of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't even notice that. Yeah, zeros, minus ones, minus twos. Or no, wait, minus one. Yeah, we're, no, they're not. Because your plus ones are here. So is that, or, that's not actually order. That's kind of chaotic, actually. Kind of chaotic. I don't know, where should the plus ones be? Should they be on the up first? Should it go plus one, zeros, then minus one? Because it starts counting down? You know? You know? Now, think about that. It's definitely not in order, though. Because these plus ones shouldn't be over here after minus eight. I'm telling you, that's, that's, that's making my brain hurt. I don't know. 
<laughs> Here we go. The whole reason I bought the box. The whole reason I paid for this stupid box. The Mythos bag. Um, I don't have my other one down here that we normally play with, but anyways, this is a definitely, uh, like I have large hands, uh, six foot four. So, you know, I have big hands, uh, and, uh, yeah, they, 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 that's hopefully can help you see that this is uh pretty damn big. It's a big bag. So you, even if you use coin capsule stuff, uh, coin capsule, um, uh, mythos tokens, you, you should be fine. You should be fine. So it's a nice big bag. Does it really glow in the dark? Billy, are you lying? I don't know. I, I haven't had it under enough light yet. If if it does glow, but I'm not seeing any any glowing. But it should. But I, it doesn't look like it is. <laughs> but yes, we have a bag. We have an opaque container. It is included. You do not need to buy one. You do not need to go grab a mug. Uh, or go on Etsy and spend $30 on a bag plus $50 shipping. None of that stuff. None of that stuff. All right. So, uh, as you can see, it has the insert in it, like Marvel Champions, you know, that kind of style, uh, insert. Okay, you know, uh, hopefully that's helpful. Oh, there's our little, our new art investigator, uh, cards. Okay, uh, so, so we'll see this is packaged logically. And it's cool, you can actually store it in here. I stored my Marvel Champion stuff in that core set with expansions and sleeving stuff too uh, for a little while. I, I don't know when I outgrew it, but it wasn't long. <laughs> As this game won't, you know, you won't be able to store your stuff in here that long either. But supposedly this is all super logically uh, packaged, which is amazing for new players, like amazing. Okay, so here is, um, these are all your level up cards are in here, your experience cards. I see a, a one experience card. I'm pretty sure all your player cards in here for leveling up, which you do not need when you first start a campaign. So new players do not need to touch this yet. So you can leave that aside. We'll open those and kind of look at them and everything. But uh, And then you have your scenarios individually wrapped like they came out of a Mythos pack. So they're wrapped in plastic, ready to go. So when you're first starting, you just need this one. You don't have to get confused and, and, and wonder what's going on here. And I'm sure the monsters for each scenario, the uh, encounter sets or whatever they're called, are probably included. We'll open the gathering and take a look. Uh, we'll actually open all of them uh, because I want to compare some art from the, uh, the existing core set. Uh, compare some art. I actually have all the cards I pulled out of an old core set that have changed art in the new one. And we'll actually compare, uh, we'll go through it. Uh, so this uh, is not going to be a short unboxing, I'm sure, but uh, it's going to be thorough. As if you've already seen, as you've already seen. Uh, so yeah, we're going to go through the old cards and kind of take a look and compare art. So stay tuned for that. So we will need to open all this stuff. But uh, let me just open the gathering right now and see if that theory is true, that all the monster sets you need for it are in here. But then again, some of the monster sets will be reused, right? So maybe you need to... I don't know if they're all completely separate. Oh, Janet says, close to super logic packaging, they don't tell you that you need encounter cards from a previous scenario after the first. That's exactly what I was just trying to find out, Janet. Thank you for answering that, thank you. Uh, but it, it makes sense that they're kind of like, it's only, I like the way they're only putting in front of you the ones you need for the first scenario. Like, I just like how that first, uh, first evening, first experience, first afternoon playing the game, you know? You can get it to the table quicker, you're not overwhelmed cards, I do not need to look at upgrade cards. I do not need to look at cards in these two packs yet. Obviously, after you play the first scenario once, maybe twice as you're learning, then you start reading the rules, you know, going into it a little deeper, grab the rules reference, that kind of stuff. Holy crap, we found Lita. She's right in here with the encounter. So we have the gathering, a uh, little reference card. We got our agenda and act deck, goes right into locations, and then they give you Lita. So like, as you're setting up, Lita is here. She's not hidden. She's not hidden in the middle, you know, with these player cards or at the end of all the upgrade cards, you know, to find later. Uh, that's where it was before. Uh, that's why people can find it, I think. Me, I just sorted all the cards out on a table before I started realizing what the hell they, they were and where I was going. So I didn't have the problem, but I can see why once I looked it up after you guys are telling me about it. Uh, so yeah, all the monsters are here, all the, uh, you know, the treachery cards. Uh, yeah, and then you just play with this. So... 
like like uh, uh, Janet saying in the chat. So if I go here, where's my um, where's my encounter or campaign guide? So in your campaign guide, uh, when you're setting up a campaign, you need certain encounter sets. So you need like sets from the the scenario, and then you need all these little like subsets of cards and treachery cards and enemy cards and stuff uh, to put in. But later scenarios will use some of the same ones. So. If I go here, for example, uh, this is the last scenario in the campaign. Uh, you'll need this one, for example, this little symbol. And as you see, it's the same symbol you need in the first one. So you know you need to pull those cards out of the gathering. So if you're not paying attention to that when you're setting up, you might accidentally like set up the Devour below and not have all the encounter cards included. That's the only thing. Maybe they should have included a card in here um right before you hit your treachery cards and your monster cards it says stop you know one of those stop cards we see in marvel champions uh in the in the packs that says stop do not forget to grab these from you know the gathering uh you know grab your your sets from the gathering pack or whatever um yeah that's the only thing that would be nice but uh maybe in the next course set <laughs> uh so yeah so it's all there uh and then your investigators so uh, anyone who knows the investigator starter decks that exist, there's these packs you can buy uh, that have one for each uh, class in the game and you can buy those and they come with new player cards in them and you can play. Well, these are packaged similarly uh, where you have your guardian, uh, Roland, is all just packaged here ready to go. And with a player reference card included too on the back. Oh, that's cool. So you can just crack this pack and start playing. So literally you can be like, all right, uh, you know, hey Mel, you wanna play Wendy? Here's Wendy, open that and let's play. So like literally like, and then if you don't care about Mystic or Rogue or whatever, you know, or you only have, you know, you're obviously gonna not play with all five at once uh, cause you only play four player tops, but you can play solo and stuff and two player. Uh, the rest you just keep wrapped up if you don't need them yet. And obviously you can use some of the cards in them for deck building and stuff. Um, so let's crack Rollins here. And yeah, it's just packaged separate, so you don't have to like overwhelm yourself with cards you don't need to care about when you're first playing. And the best way to learn this game is to just set it up on the table and start walking through it with the learn to play beside you. Uh, so there's the new roll-in. And there's the old uh, creeper in the alley roll-in. You know. I, I don't know why, but uh, it, they, they gave it new artwork. They gave it new artwork. So yeah, um, and yeah, it just comes with the, the cards, all the stuff you need, his weaknesses are here, you know. Oh, first aid, that's one of the cards with new art. The old first aid's like a bloody bandage or something, right? Yeah, we can go through, so we can see, for example, I find first aid in here. Oh, well, there's a couple, couple Guardian cards. So, old and new first aid. Old first aid makes me not hungry uh, after I see it. Uh, new first aid, okay. Okay, makes more sense. Makes more sense. <laughs> uh, okay, cool. All right, uh, let's find guard dog. There's a new guard dog. There's a new guard dog. So the one on the left is the one from the old set. And there's the new guard dog art. Yeah, the, the left one looks like a little dated, right? It's a little dated art. Uh, the new one looks, you know, looks a little more up to date. It looks cool. What else we got in here? Uh, oh. Uh, I think, hold on, let's see. I know there's some secret cards too. Let's see if, uh, I don't know if any of these are them. Medical text, medical text. So on the left, old medical text. On the right, new medical text.
Working a hunch. That's a new one. Whoops. On the left, working a hunch, old one. On the right, new one. <laughs> new Roland looks like a young Brendan Fraser, says Bob. Billy says, I like old guard dog art better than the new one. I like them both, but I do think the new one in my personal, again, art, we all know art's subjective, uh, but I, I like the new one better, actually. Um, but again, it's like, I wouldn't care if they changed the art. Oh, uh, good, good question, Lucas. Uh, Dr. Milan, right? Is he updated? Is he updated? Uh, I don't, I don't know if they're going to do the taboo stuff. Do you, do you guys know? I don't remember the original. And I, I haven't played with taboo stuff to know like what they changed on them. I, I haven't gone that far. But is, is he updated? I, I don't know. Lucas, can you answer that? I don't have the other one near me, actually. I can actually look online, though. That's probably the best way. Let's get ArkhamDB open. Uh, yeah, see, gratuitous, I, I'm thinking what you're saying. Taboo won't be included on cards ever. It's not required. It's just an added thing. And Bob says, that is the same old Dr. Milan. Yeah, I don't think they're rebalancing the game at all. Yeah, I don't think this is a chance for them to, like, rebalance anything. Uh, they're just keeping everything same. So, like, players just won't, if you don't go on the internet and read and join forums and dig, you'll never know about a taboo list, right? You just play the game. I guess maybe it is in the rules. In one of the expansions, it probably mentions it. Um, but yeah, so you just play the same. It's all the same. So you don't need to buy this for like reprinted cards or anything. You're not going to get your taboo cards this way. You'll have to still go print them or whatever if you want them. Well, a new deduction. Oh, look, it's, uh, she's got the YouTube thumbnail face for clickbait. There you go, the clickbait YouTube thumbnail face. <laughs> New corset? It's got a mythos bag. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, man. There you go. There you go. And let's see. There is some, um, there's a couple neutral cards. I think it's just Unexpected Courage and Overpowered, uh, which let's see. Oh, he doesn't even have, okay. We'll find those. Let's check Wendy's deck. Yes, Steph, yes, you know the face. There's your thumbnail, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You guys know what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay, so Wendy's got a bunch of stuff. Let's check uh, her card. There's a new Wendy, a uh, new Wendy investigator art. Okay. Uh, I think Wendy's. Amulet, yep. Now the art on the new ones is cool, but I, I'm with these two Wendy ones, I actually prefer the old art in this card in the last one I just showed. But they, it's still nice, like it's not bad art. It's not bad either way. I guess Wendy was supposed to be more of a redhead and they uh, probably got in trouble. I, I don't know. But uh, I guess because I see what's happened. I think because they changed this art, and then they, you know, they made her, you know, more, the red hair is more prominent. Uh, and then they looked at this and they were like, oh, that doesn't even look like her anymore. You got to update that. So then they tell the artist, can you make me, you know, Wendy's amulet card? Okay, so they had to update that. And then, you know, abandon and alone. I mean, that art would have worked. You, you can tell she has red hair there. But they just went with consistency. Which I like. They went with consistency, you can tell. Same artist, right? Yeah, obviously, same artist. Looks like definitely the same. 
Well, they took the time to update those cards too. Uh, yeah. They update some weaknesses to some other ones. Uh, yeah, they did. Okay. Uh, what do they update for scavenger or survivor? Sorry, they did scavenging, will to survive, and baseball bat. Let's check out those scavenging. Yeah, it looks like they just took the chance to like update some art that just looked kind of like older. I don't know, but that look at this, look at in the background there. Yeah, that's a definite improvement in my mind. That is way better. That's way better. Oh, here's baseball bat. Yeah, I always thought the art on baseball bat looked a little weird. Am I the only one that thought it looked like the the face on, on the person looked a little like something like not right with it? But again, it's like an Arkham game, so you're kind of like okay with it. Maybe maybe it's because the cleavage. Maybe they didn't want to, you know, want to be the game to be a little more family friendly. I don't know. Maybe it was that why they changed that art. That would be that was what I would think there, but again, I'm not sure. But uh, yeah, they changed baseball bat. And will to survive. Let's see if we can find that one. No. Nope. Oh, that's an upgrade card, right? Yeah, yeah, that's an upgrade card. So I don't think we'll find it in here. Okay. Oh, there's some uh, rogue cards. Let's see. These are the rogue cards that have been updated. So let's see if we can find those. Burglary. Burglary has been updated. There's your two different burglaries. Old burglary, new burglary. Where's the Wendy's Frosty card? Mmm, <laughs> Frosty. Uh, Flip says, old baseball bat looked like the nanny without pants. <laughs> uh, all right. <laughs> Hard Knocks. Oh, here we go. We got a new one. Hard Knocks. So, I feel like there's some censorship going on here. They get rid of the guy who's who's pounding back the liquor and uh, throw another Wendy yard in there. He can around a corner. So maybe maybe they didn't want to include a card about uh, you know chugging alcohol in in a deck uh, for like a little you know a, a little child. Maybe they felt like you know we're gonna put hard knocks in Wendy's deck. Let's put Wendy's art on it instead. Uh, uh, instead of some dude uh, you know. Washing away his problems there, drinking away his problems. Okay. Yeah, so see, you have like enough like uh, neutral cards just put in each deck, right? Oh, there's overpower. Look at this. Look at this. So obviously Game of Thrones called and told them to take Cal Drogo out of the uh, art for overpower. And uh, instead they put, I think it's Mark Harrigan, right? That's how you say his name. Hmm. Anyways. Thoughts on that one? Oh, another one, Unex Unexpected Courage. Yeah, what about that one? I don't know. I think both are fine. The new one uh, looks a little cooler, I think. Hmm. Yeah, what do you guys think? Changes to overpower and unexpected courage. That's interesting. Say hello to my little friend, yes. <laughs> Oh, sorry, I see Bob's comment on scavenging. Uh, let's see. What's the new one? Let's get it up on the screen here. Saying. Yeah, Bob's saying in the comments, that does not say scavenging to me. It says one more step 
Gribbly, and you get the broken bottle to the face. <laughs> she scavenged, scavenged the broken bottle, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. All right, so that's Wendy. Uh, I can throw that in there. Uh, let's do Daisy. Serenity now, serenity now. Serenity now. Yeah, the new art's nice. It's like, I, I guess they spread out some of the art and we're like, let's take a chance to refresh. Uh. <laughs> All right, where's our Daisy? Now, this is, this is where, it, I, I'm sure the other, there was some other Magali in there, but I just realized. This I know is Magali art. So is it only me, but is it crazy that they're actually replacing Magali art? Like, she's the best artist they got, but then Alexander, no knock against Alexander, he's doing amazing things too. And, and you know what it is? I bet they wanted to replace one or two of the investigator art. And they had Alexander do it, and then they're probably like, wait, we want them to all be consistent. So they probably had him do all the art, actually. Uh, where's that Roland? I know it was his name on the Wendy. Yep, yep, same artists for all of them. So it's a consistency thing. They wanted it to be consistent, which makes sense. It's, it's like a player's first experience to the game. You want them to, like, you know, really, really like the aesthetics and, you know, and buy more stuff, right? So uh, that's cool. Yeah, no problem. But yeah, replacing Magali art. Wow. Wow. I can't believe that. You're not supposed to ever replace Magali art. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think I can ever play with this one. I'm sorry, Alexander. I have to always play with this Daisy. I'm sorry. <sighs> wow. Okay. I don't know. Shots fired. Shots fired. All right. Uh, Daisy's tote bag. Is it the same? No, it's different. It's like modified. Same artist, but they like updated the clothes. <laughs> Cause they were like, wait, <laughs> wait, her clothes. She can't use that bag on a different day with a different outfit. So they're like, we gotta fix it. We gotta fix it. There we go. Now her bag is used on the same day she's wearing the same dress. Perfect. And now it's consistent. No matter which card you use, Daisy's tote bag is now corrected. How many angry emails were sent about that one? Or, or is it the fact that this belt doesn't look like it's in the right spot? Maybe, maybe it was that. I don't know. The belt, belt doesn't look like it should be there. It looks like it should be up here. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's a weird one. That's a weird one. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. It's weird. <laughs> I don't know. It's a weird one. I, I just don't know why some of these they update, but it's just, it's interesting. I find it super interesting. Uh, all right. What else do we have? Necronomicon. I don't think that one was updated. Paranoia. Oh, let's see. We already looked at the seeker. I don't think there are any other mist uh, or any um mystic cards that were updated. Sorry, one sec, let me just check. Yeah, I don't think they updated any art on the mystic cards. At least none that I see in the list. Uh, but I'll go through them quickly just so you guys can see. I mean, you guys will notice if there's something. That card I'm not, I don't recognize, but I don't remember. And your little reference card. 
Oh, oh no, I dropped one. Oh well. <laughs> it doesn't say Necro Comic Con. Yeah, what the hell is with that? I'll still use it though. So we have to find Will to Survive, uh, which will be in the expansion ones. That one I have um, as a player card. New subscriber, I don't know how to say that. Katulut? Thank you so much for subscribing. Welcome to the channel. Pull up a chair. So we got new skids, also by Alexander. Also by Alexander. Uh, let's see. Oh no, another Magali art replacement. Oh no. Oh no. Uh, the new one looks good though. Actually, the new one, uh, I don't know. This might be one of Magali's old designs, I don't know, but it, it still looks good. Still looks good. But I don't know. I think Alexander beat her here. I think he beat her. That definitely looks really cool. Like almost like a photograph. And I usually say that about Magali's art. Okay. Yeah, I don't think anything is changed. I think we already saw the road cards that are changed. We can just go through those quick. We saw all the changed um changed art. There's guard dog again. We saw the changed guardian art. And we saw overpower. And Agnes. Let's take out Agnes's cards. Yes, Brian, I am mad about Daisy. <laughs> yes, the new one isn't worse than the old one, that one. Yeah, yeah. All right, so now we have Agnes, also Alexander, which I'm all good. If Alexander's doing more art for this game, I'm all down with that. It looks good, but another Magali switch here. I don't know. I feel, Alexander's are like photographs. They're like photographs, like it looks so real. But Magali's looks amazing. But side by side, you can see it's definitely a different art style, that's for sure. Definitely a different art style. I don't know what I got my nail there. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Hmm. Oh, Dark Memories new. They updated Dark Memory. Uh, one of uh, her weaknesses. And yeah, they didn't they didn't update any mystic cards. They're all the same, I think. I, I didn't see any changed art. Yeah, see they gave you copies. I just don't know if you still have a full set, you know. It's not three of in this game, it's two of, right? I oh man. Getting confused with games, playing so many deck building games, games that require building decks. It's two of, right, in this game? Yeah, it's two of. So you definitely have two of each card, because I'm seeing a lot of the same cards. Like, so, like, example, you have, like, one rabbit's foot. I'm pretty sure you have, like, you know, Wendy will have the other rabbit's foot. Yeah, see, they're the same cards. I'm going through the exact same cards in the same order. One course that had two of each card. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, okay. But not of everything though, right? Because that's why you needed two course sets. Or no, you needed two course sets for... No, you still needed them for deck building. Yeah, I'm getting confused now. I am confused. I should have taken all the cards from the course set and just had them here so I could look through. Like, put them back in order, you know? Just to see. 
but like one player should never need to buy two core sets is what I understand with this thing. That's what I, I thought is, was the goal of it too, but I'm pretty sure it was accurate. Okay, and then we have our little uh, investigator cards. That's cool. Yeah, they, it, I think this is exact same as a Marvel Champions box, which I believe I tossed mine. So I don't think I have the core set Marvel Champions box to compare, but this seems like exactly the same size. And FFG is known to do that where they, they have like specific box sizes that they use from, for different games and different expansion sizes and stuff. But you can always find like another product they've made usually with using existing dimensions. Um, Here's the upgraded player cards. Uh, so there's Will to Survive. That's the only one I know that has changed art in here. Um, and I did find, for those that are curious and want to know uh, what extra upgrade cards they've included, I found a post on Reddit right before the stream went live. Um, and... For those that are curious, here is the list, uh, which supposedly verified by a few people in this thread. Um, so they have first aid three is now included. I've had worse level four seeking answers level two. I, I don't have these cards here to show you what they are. I don't even know what some of these cards are. Uh, old book of lore three. This is just for people who like know the game very well and are curious what is in this set, you know, and maybe why they might recommend it for somebody, you know, put it under the, you know, get it, get it as a Christmas gift for someone else. Uh, so it's just including more upgrade cards. So here's some of the cards it includes. Sorry, why is it doing that? Like scrolling too much. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. 13 times two, I assume. 13 times two, so 26 ish pieces of paper, but uh, 16 new cards that are upgrade cards included that, that you can choose from without having to buy expansions. Oh, Janet, thank you so much. Janet says, this box is the same as Marvel Champions. I checked mine because I want to move my Marvel Champions custom insert to this box. <laughs> nice. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. So any, any insert solutions for the Marvel Champions, Champions box will work for this then. Uh, that's great. That is great, actually. So any, any of the insert companies out there that make box inserts that people like to use, uh, yeah, you should be able to use the same one, which is cool. Or anything you made, like Janet did. Uh, which is cool. So these are all your upgrade cards. Again, when you're first playing, you don't need to look in here. But after you complete like your first scenario, they tell you you can spend experience points. Uh, this is where you'll go. And, and as a play group, you'll spread these out on the table, kind of look through them and uh, figure out what you want to upgrade to. So hopefully they put some cool options in here, some staple cards uh, that make it more interesting uh, than the core set upgrade path did. So definitely if they've given you 16 more cards to choose from, you know, I, I assume it, it, it makes a couple little better deck building paths. And they probably learned from what they did in the Investigator Starter Deck products that had like two kind of deck building paths you could go, two upgrade paths uh, with each of those characters. So they kind of like probably try to simulate that here, I would assume. But also they need extra cards too because you have four players playing along with these cards, right? So you couldn't just include the exact same uh, otherwise, you know, the pool would be very limited for four players. And it's good that they included upgrades of some of the existing cards in the decks already, because that just makes more sense. It's just easy to understand you're upgrading, you know, a more powerful version of a card you have. I like that. It just kind of helps helps click uh, for a new player learning. Like, you know, you see the scrying and you're like, oh, it's a better version of the scrying I already played with. Okay, I get it. 
I get why it's more expensive. Okay, I should save up for that or not because I like the one I have, you know, or whatever. There's Lucky. Oh, will she survive? So they put that uh, the character from the 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 Survivor starter deck on there, right? There's old will to survive and new will to survive. Oh, what's their name? What's their name? I forget now. It's like the mail carrier, right? That's cool. Oh, Ford product placement. Yeah, I saw that. Oh, you see the Ford car, the Ford logo on the front of the car. Uh oh, Stella. Thank you. It's Stella. It's Stella. Thank you so much. I, I forgot the name. <laughs> Elder Sign Amulet. Charisma. I know that card. I've used it a couple times. There's your, uh, so they, they have these weaknesses. Oh, did they include a, a random weakness already in the deck for everybody? And these are just like your duplicates, right? I think they did that already, actually. I wasn't even paying attention. But I wonder if they did that already, so you don't have to do it, right? Because when you're deck building... Is it in here? Yeah, they did already. Yeah. So if you look on the back of the investigator's deck, so uh, Skidzo tool here, you see deck building requirements, do, does not count towards deck size. You need to put on the lamb, hospital debts, and one random basic weakness. And that's when you're building different decks, uh, but they included. So you have on the lamb and hospital debts are always included, but you see here the one random basic weakness. Uh, so the player doesn't even need to, to worry, it's already there. They just gave like a specific one that probably is not too hard to handle for this investigator, right? So they already put Mob Enforcer in here, and because you're supposed to have two of each weakness in your collection, uh, in the, that upgrade pack, they include one of each of the extras, uh, you know, so you that way you have two of each copy in your... Um, that you're pulling from when you're playing the game in the future. Uh, you know, after you go uh, start customizing decks and stuff. So when you play this for the first time, you don't need to worry about doing a random basic weakness. Uh, but when you're looking for, you know, just some variability, you can shuffle these all together and start pulling random basic weakness from them if you want. Uh, you don't have to play with the one that's in the deck. But that's cool they did that. So the player doesn't have to worry and like forget to do it or put one in that's like maybe too punishing. Um, from the start. I, I like that. I like that. I think that's very new player friendly and I like that a lot. I like it a lot. Okay, uh, so let's look at the art that's changed. There's art that changed on a few, um, a few of the, uh, like encounter cards. A few of the encounter cards art has changed. Uh, nothing changed in Midnight Masks though. Nothing changed in Midnight Math, supposedly. Um, but... There might be some spoilers in here for those that don't want to see, but I think all this stuff is like in the setup, like you see it right away. Um, but one I will find that you'll see often is Locked Door. I don't know where which set that's included in, actually. Let's see if I can find it quick. Maybe that's in the Midnight Math one. Yeah, it is in there. Sorry. So... In the Midnight Mass scenario card specifically, in this scenario set, they didn't change any art, but in the encounter set, one of the encounter sets included in it, they did. So Locked Door, you know, you know Locked Door, guys. You know when that card comes out, Mel and I start huffing and puffing in our playthroughs going, oh, Jesus. Uh, so there's the new Locked Door. They actually changed the art on Locked Door. So now, instead of 63 locks on the door, it's only one lock on the door. <laughs> so yeah, they changed lock door. That's interesting. Weird one. Uh, maybe it was to make it more obvious that it's locked. I, I don't know. I don't know. But anyways, they, they, they did that. What else did they change? Uh, let's see. So in the gathering... And I can tell it's for the gathering because 
Uh, there is the, the little torch symbol. So that's your scenario symbol for those that don't know. And then if I look at the gathering, there's a little torch. So you know if you ever drop all the cards, you know how to put them all back together. You just look for all the ones with the gathering symbol on them. Uh, but the parlor... Oh, okay. So they changed the parlor. So the parlor, the entrance to the parlor is blocked by a darkly glowing, unfathomable barrier. You cannot move into the parlor. So they kind of, instead of showing you an open door saying, come on in, uh, the art now kind of matches the text and they say, stay out. <laughs> you have to get through the barrier first, Rob. Don't just go in the room and flip the card over. Don't cheat. So yeah, so they changed the parlor. Uh, this one, try to see if there's any other. So all, all this stuff's from the last scenario, which I will open. So if you don't want spoilers, you don't want to look at any of the cards from the final set. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, scrub away or look away, cover your eyes. I'm going to show a few cards that changed art uh, from the Devourer Below scenario. And you can tell it's that scenario by this symbol here. And I'll try not to show off too many cards here. Uh, okay. So the, this is for the people who are like curious what changed for art. I just want to show this stuff. So there's the main path. They, they changed the art for the main path. Nothing real spoilery here. I'm not going to flip the card over or anything. Uh, but just different art on the main path. Interesting. Oh, this one's flipped. But I think it needs to be. I think that one needs to be because I think it's the art on the back they changed. Yeah, the Arkham Woods art is the same. There's a whole bunch of different Arkham Woods. Uh, but one of them is titled Cliffside. Cliffside. And they changed that one. This, I, I don't know what spoiler this is, right? But... So you can see the left one, copyright 2016 FFG. The right one, copy 2020, copyright 2020 FFG. So they changed the Arkham Woods cliffside. Is it because they didn't want to show like uh, some bones being sacrificed on an altar there? I don't know. But uh, new art on that one. New art on that one. Let's put that in there. What else do they do? Oh, a treachery card called Umordoth's Wrath. Which I'm assuming is in here. Nope. Did I miss it? Oh, I did. I did, I did. So there's a treachery card included in the last set. They changed the art on that. They went real crazy with it. I love it. I love the new art. It definitely fits better, right? Definitely fits better. <laughs> and then Umordoth. So this might be spoilery. I don't know if anyone wants to see this. Uh, I think it's a card you set aside at the start anyway, so you would see it. Like, as I'm going through here to set up the scenario... Well, maybe it's not, I don't know. Where is this guy? Oh, it is. Yeah, sorry. It's right here. It's not spoiler. You see it right when you're, like, setting up the scenario. I wasn't sure. I thought... I was worried it was one that's hidden on the back, but it's just a regular card. Not spoilery. Not spoil. No spoilers. No spoilers. Um, but it is spoilers if you haven't played through this scenario and you don't want to see anything coming down the line. Um, but yeah, there's Umordoth. Umordoth. So they changed the art on Umordoth to match that other card, really. And that's it. That's all the cards that they changed art for that I know of. Um, so yeah. Pretty cool. I think I can fit all these in here. Yep. Yep. Well, all the cards fit in these little two things until you start sleeving them and then you can expand in here you can make your own dividers or I'm sure there'll be dividers out there that you can buy I know there's some for Marvel Champions that people make and you can print them out uh, but yeah we've got a Mythos bag got all our tokens which I'll obviously punch out later but yeah that's the revised core set uh, a new updated learn to play guide larger, larger campaign guide larger uh, printed reference guide your ad to buy Unfathomable, if you didn't know about it. Your larger re rule, learn to play and rules reference. There's your older ones, which are smaller. 
Actually, there's the size. There's your size difference. Like a couple inches, you know, uh, wider, a couple inches taller. Maybe. But yeah, there you go. There you go. New shiny. New shiny revised core set. Uh, like I said before, the, you know, ideal way for you now to buy at your way into this game. Assuming you're starting from nothing. And you don't have a friend that already plays it. The other way I'd argue would be the Investigator Starter Decks, which have been around for a couple of years. Um, you can look at getting one of those. And those can also add to your card pool. So uh, once you play with some of these investigators and you, you, know, you find a class you like, you can go grab one of the investigator starter decks or a couple of them for the classes you really like. Uh, or if you want to play, you know, you're playing with your significant other or you know, a, a friend or someone at a game group you play this game with and you both want to play the same class, uh, you could, instead of buying a whole second core set, you could just go buy one of those investigator starter decks and then you both can play like the same class uh, or just, you know, spice it up, try someone different. Um, and and th those add more player cards because uh, there's some similar player cards, but a lot of different ones too um, that you can add to your deck building options right from the, the start. And, and it doesn't add really any confusion or anything. They're very good new, new player friendly products, uh, which I like. Yeah, I like those Investigator Starter decks. They're already ready to go, just like these decks now. Uh, you can just open the pack. They have their upgrade path in there already uh upgrade cards come with it uh so now you can mix and match and, and you know now you have more upgrade cards to choose from uh if you'd ever want to really you know fully build your deck from scratch uh which is cool so overall I, I like what they did here i think it's a good idea what they did i just wish they did it a long time ago or from the start um but again i'm gonna play with this next week uh we'll do a solo i'll, I'll grab roland's pre-built deck and we'll just try to play through the scenarios. So tune in if you want to learn about the game. Uh, learn kind of how, how it plays. Well, that first scenario was like a tutorial scenario. Uh, which we have played on the channel before. You can find that down in the playlist section in, in the video description. Um, you can see us play it. Uh, but if you want to just see a solo, I'm going to play next week. Just using stuff from this box. And then we can go through the upgrade path. You can kind of see what's in there. You guys can help us decide. Uh, or help me decide, sorry, how we upgrade and go through the deck. And we'll fail horribly, I'm sure, as we go through the campaign. It'll be fun. Um, and then what I'll do is the following week, I plan to play that uh, the same Night of the Zealot campaign, uh, but using the Return to box to uh, spice it up. And then uh, Yogi, uh, one of our producers, uh, Yogi Bear, he uh, sent me a deck using, uh, I think, the whole card pool that we have. And uh, I'll try that deck against the beefed up Return to Night of the Zealot. And we'll play that solo the following week. Maybe even in the same week. I don't know how long it's going to take. Uh, but we'll find out after we play it through it the first time. The cost for the new core set? Good question. Good question. Let's find out. Let's find out. So if you go to fantasyflightgames.com, that's the publisher for the game. Uh, here's their website. This is an article they have, you know, available now, came out. Um, but we can click on the card game here. You go to products. Actually, it's probably the easiest way. Go to Products, click on Arkham Files, uh, Arkham Horror the Card Game. This is where you can find updated rule books, FAQs, all that stuff. A lot of people, I'm su oh, super surprised though, is people who get in these FFG games, start buying packs and stuff, but don't realize there's like a support section uh, and you can find like the latest FAQ in here if you're confused about things. Uh, they have some taboo cards, which is like updated, but don't worry about that now if you're new to the game. Even if you've been playing the game for a while, I still think, who cares? Like, don't even worry about it. Uh, but if you're hardcore, you play the game a lot, and you, you need things spiced up, you want to stop playing with the same cards in your deck, uh, the taboo lists uh, kind of are a way to kind of nerf cards and stuff to kind of, it's kind of like restricted lists and stuff in other uh, card games um, to stop the, to shake up the meta and, and that kind of thing. Um, you know, shake up the deck building rules a little bit. Um, but yeah, you can find tons of stuff down here. All your campaign logs, you want to print those instead of writing on the back of your campaign book. Uh, and play the campaign multiple times, just go print them out from here. Uh, but anyways, to the price, uh, it's US, US price is, MSRP is 60. 60 buckaroonos, uh, which is different from the 45 uh, original. But again, you can find this core set new for like 30 US. Uh, and probably even cheaper now once, once stores start stocking this one and nobody's buying the old one, uh, you're going to see this old one discounted. But you, if you want to get serious with the game you and have full deck building options, you need two of the original core set. So you're actually saving money now. 
uh, buying the new one and getting more for your money and less waste, like less cards that are just garbage. Because when you buy two of the old core sets, and this happens with so many different Fantasy Flight games, living card games, you buy multiple core sets because you want extra Gandalfs to build decks for your friends, but you get tons of the encounter cards you never need more of. So there's so much waste, like so much waste. It's very frustrating. I ended up using those cards for like uh, when I was playtesting and using them as like backs for proxies I was printing and stuff, uh, or for deck testing for tournaments. But again, I, there's so many, I don't need them all. It's just waste. And yeah, you get a freaking bag. You get a bag. Bag. <laughs> Dale says saving money by buying games I like this logic thanks you're the best <laughs> yeah if you're on the fence before I was saying it starting in like earlier this year uh Janet probably knows roughly but before before this product was announced I was saying it was needed when I first got into the game I was like they're still doing this stupid thing where you need two core sets and I'm wasting a bunch of cards. I went through it with Lord of the Rings, Game of Thrones, uh, Warhammer Conquest, Netrunner, uh, pfft, name all the living card games, competitive and cooperative. Fantasy Flight Games, horrible for doing it. It's a huge money grab. They do it just for a money grab. It, it, it's stupid. Because uh, you know they could have just packaged the extra cards in the box and say, hey, players, don't touch these if you're going to be confused by these extra cards for deck building uh, later. No, they're like, yeah, you want to go buy a second core set to get all the cards you need. So dumb, so dumb. Um, but uh, I like that they did it. I, I think it's good, and hopefully they do this going forward. Um, but yeah, I was saying it in like earlier this year. I was like, man, they need to change this. They need to stop doing this. And then there was rumblings of a revised core set. So I was advising everyone. I was like, man, where do I get this game? I want to get into it. So we've been saying it in playthroughs. Like, wait, 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 wait. You're gonna see. They're gonna do a revised core set. And sure enough, they did, and it got announced. And they're repackaging the rest of the expansions. They're not releasing everything in Mythos packs going forward where you buy a deluxe box plus a bunch of little packs. They're actually repackaging old sets. So if you bought this revised core set, don't buy any expansions that come in little packs. Wait, all this stuff's gonna be reprinted in a box that includes all the investigator cards and a box that includes all the scenario cards. And those two boxes together should be less than the cost for you tracking down all the packs and the deluxe boxes for a cycle. Should be less. And we can probably see that here, actually. Yeah, we should be able to see that here. So the Dunwich Legacy, if you were to price out, this is the first cycle that uh, was released for the game. You do not need to play them in any kind of order. Uh, you can buy any cycle you want. But they obviously add mechanics to each cycle and make it more complex. So for a new player, you probably want to look at Dunwich Legacy to start with. They are repackaging that. It will be coming out, I think, early next year, first quarter or something like that. Um, but it, it costs like $120 to track down the, the um, deluxe box. Then you need to start buying the packs in order. And there's six Mythos packs. And if you don't have them in order, it, it, like you have to skip scenarios and the story kind of doesn't make sense. It's kind of stupid. Uh, so you kind of wait till you have, you need all the packs really to start the campaign anyway. And you kind of want to have all the packs because the packs introduce player cards for upgrades that you may want to put in your deck earlier in the campaign. But if you're like still tracking down packs, so I personally don't start a campaign until I have all the packs for it. Um, and that's just how I like to do it. And that's how most people like to do it. So now Fantasy Flight Games is going to start releasing all of that stuff in, in two boxes. All the encounter cards in one box, all the player cards in another box. So, you know, don't support this horrible release model here. Uh, that's also more a waste of packaging and stuff. Um, I don't know if that's here. But we can check out Edge of the Earth, for example. Uh, it's actually only 60 for the uh, encounter, I think, and 40 for the player cards, um, which is only 100. So you're saving like 20-ish dollars US, I think, is what it, it equals, um, which is good. And you'd only have to buy two products per cycle now. You don't have to track down one or the other. And if you don't want any of the player cards, which everyone will still buy those, um, but they're not forcing you now to buy, um, to hunt down a specific Mythos pack so you get extra copies of uh, some player cards. You now can just buy the player card box. You don't need to buy encounter cards, you know, 
which is cool. Uh, no, the return to stuff, I think they're keeping those products separate. Uh, Dale's asking, do you think the return to stuff will be in the new stuff? No. Uh, from my understanding, they're still going to sell the return to products as a separate thing, I think. But I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure they're not. Because they still haven't even designed all those yet, right? I think they're keeping those separate. Screw <laughs> you, Dan. <laughs> uh, Dan says, Rob, this was tremendously informative and valuable. You should do this streaming thing full time. Well, that's a great idea. That's a great idea. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be streaming this game next week. Don't you worry. <laughs> and we're streaming tomorrow and two days after that and the next day after that. Yeah, we're definitely streaming full time over here ish. Uh, but yeah. Cast tokens. Oh, yeah, the extra tokens. That's why I have a sheet. That's why I have these extra sheets that I could have just pulled out and, and compared because I, I, you get extra tokens uh, when you have to buy multiple core sets, which is silly. Eddie says it's 120 US no matter which way you buy the set, Rob. Uh, did I do my math wrong? Am I crazy? That says 60, right? 59.95 plus 39.95. That's 100, right? And then what's 15 times 6? That's like 90, right? Plus 30? That would be 130. I'm pretty sure my math's good. But I think you're wrong, Flip. Get out. You're wrong. Yeah, it's definitely cheaper. According to MSRP on Fancy Flight Games website, if you're in a different region, maybe the prices are the same. Maybe it's the same. But I'm pretty sure. <laughs> oh, Bob. Uh, let's see. Oh, you misread the announcement. Okay. <laughs> I thought so. I was like, but I, I am wrong with my math sometimes. It, call me out on it. I'm good. Thank you for making me double check. I'd rather be giving out the right info than the wrong info flip, but I appreciate it. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I think I answered. I'm just looking through some of the questions in the chat. If anyone has any questions, let me know, or you want to look at something specifically in the box uh, before I sign off here. I don't want this to be too long. It's just an unboxing. Uh, but again, if you want to see gameplay of this, hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell right beside it so you get a notification. Uh, when we go live, we're playing Arkham Horror themed games uh, all October, a whole bunch of them. So if you want to check out that, want to see gameplay, check out some different games, uh, we'll be playing that stuff here, including this revised core set. I will be dabbling with it, checking it out. We'll be playing through it and the Edge of the Earth stuff. Um, when we get the Edge of the Earth, uh, I've already pre ordered it. So whenever it ships, uh, we'll be playing through this, and I think I want to play through this with just the revised core set and whatever cards come in here because I want to go at it from a new player perspective as like looking at it from an entry point into the game, you know, is the revised core set and then moving into the edge of the earth after, uh, is that a good entry point for players since return or uh, since Dunwich Legacy won't be available right away? Because you know when players buy the Survive's core set, they're going to start, after they played a couple times, they're going to be like, I want an expansion. I want to find out if these light blue boxes right here are the next logical step, at least at the current time, right? Because these come out soon. And I feel like they time the Revised core set with this new release model and this expansion around the same time. I hope that this Edge of the Earth is pretty new player friendly and they don't get too insane with it um, and, and keep it on the same kind of complexity level as like... Uh, uh, Dunwich Legacy. Hopefully, hopefully they do. Uh, but if they don't, we'll find out and we'll see if it's if it's you know that bad or not. And uh, then we'll let you guys know if you're watching along. I, I can let you know how um, you know after we play the first couple of scenarios or even the first scenario, we'll know um, if it's kind of new player friendly or if it's um, if it's better to wait for Dunwich Legacy. Um, and, and we'll know that. So that's the plan. That's the plan. And then after that, after we play the Edge of the Earth, we're going to go back and we'll play uh, the two campaigns we hadn't played yet, Innsmouth Conspiracy and Dream Eaters. Uh, we'll build some decks. We'll, we'll throw in the Edge of the Earth cards into the card pool. And we'll go back and play some of those uh, campaigns that we haven't played. We'll play those blind on the channel. But if you're looking for any of our Arkham playthroughs, including standalone scenarios and stuff, you'll find all that stuff in the playlist down below. 
uh, and any live streams will be scheduled in those playlists if they're related to those campaigns and stuff. Or, or those, uh, yeah, if you see those campaigns for future episodes. That makes any sense. Uh, Dale's saying, you're playing on easy, normal, or hard for first play? Uh, for solo, I don't know. I, I don't know. Easy, probably? What did we play? I think we played the original the first time we played on normal. Um, when we played two player through the core set, but I've never tried it solo and I don't know the consensus in the community is solo because we, you hear me complain about it in all, all of the Arkham Files games. They all have like a sweet spot that they play at. And then if you play them at like a different, dif uh, different player count or a different, uh, you know, you play them two handed, three handed, four handed, there's like the difficulty curve it is not a curve. Uh, it doesn't like, yeah, it's not consistent. So we're playing uh, other games right now on the channel, like Arkham Horror, uh, or sorry, um, we're playing Descent even. Descent was the same way we just found out. Uh, but when we play Mansion of Madness 2nd Edition, we house rule it when we're only playing two characters because we feel and we know it gets way harder and way out of control when you're only playing two-handed or two heroes or two investigators um, versus three. Once we always add a third player in, like we had Kyle in to play with us or whatever, we notice, like we play the same scenario and we'll be like, wait, it's like different like or or if we play three player first then two player second we notice it gets like extremely hard um so we house rule it a little bit um to kind of balance it when we're playing with less but uh same thing with like eldritch and arkham Horror, the board game and all this stuff we've learned that it's like that i don't know why i don't know why they do that but i don't know if this game is like that i don't think it is but i again i've only played two player in this game i've only played two player I don't know what to expect with the solo experience, so you guys will see it. I'll play. I'll try to play a little bit solo before I stream and kind of see, and maybe I'll know what difficulty I play on, just based on like I'll I'll play through the first couple scenarios just to warm myself up, get back into the game. <laughs> yeah. Brian S. says, I think the new campaign title, which is Edge of the Earth, uh, comes from the shipping crate's current location. <laughs> yeah, it's been delayed and delayed and delayed, right? Uh, I don't know. Uh, hopefully we get it soon, but you'll see it on the channel shortly after we get our copy. Um, and we'll play through it. We'll play through it blind on the channel, take a look at it. We'll spread it out on the table, figure out what's in it and that kind of thing. Uh, Gratuitous says the LCG has the advantage of deck building curbing that sweet spot. Yeah, that's true. Actually, you're right. You just have to build knowing you're playing true solo. And uh, that's the way I hope to do it. I'm going to play with the built deck. This is the thing. I'm going to play with the pre-built deck uh, for like rolling the first playthrough of it. Just to see. I just want to see. And yeah, we might get crushed. It might be like the Marvel Champions pre-built decks that are not that great. They're okay. Um, and it'll be fine. That's fine. I don't mind if we get crushed, that's all good. Um, but it's cool. It, you can then, the cool part is you play through it pre-built and then the player kind of learns the game as they do it. They get their face beat, hopefully. And then after that, you spread out the cards and you start, you know, then you start building your deck and making it more consistent uh, by pulling out cards out of the other decks and stuff. And, and maybe even going through the upgrades again a different way, uh, which I like. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, th yes, the shipping, the shipment for Edge of the Earth is on the ship used in Unfathomable, uh, which is full of nothing but hybrids. Yeah, they definitely set the ship off course, that's for sure. <laughs> Damn traitors. Uh, yeah, they definitely sent it off course. Oh, that's cool, Flip. I did not know that. I did not know that. I've not played that game, so I'm not... I cannot comment. Oh, Stacy wants me to show my case. It's upstairs, actually. Uh, I had to rip through it to find all the player cards, but I didn't bring it downstairs. So I do not have it beside me. Sorry, Stacy. <laughs> but uh, if you're curious what Stacy's talking about in the chat, uh, saying, Rob, you got to talk about and show off that sweet storage solution you have for it. Secretly, I just want to see the case again. Uh, I've linked, it's probably still down in the video description because I just copied the same uh, links from our Arkham Horror playthroughs. So if you're looking for that case uh, that I store my Arkham Horror stuff in, uh, you can find it at the link in the video description and, and you'll see it there. 
Um, but anyways, I think that's going to be it. I'm going to get out of here. Uh, and I got to go pop out tokens and stuff from Mansion of Madness expansions and start getting set up and caught up on what's new in that game from the expansions. And we'll be back tomorrow playing one of those scenarios. I don't remember which scenario I scheduled first. Uh, but we will be playing Mansion of Madness tomorrow on Saturday. And we'll be playing it again on Tuesday with three player with Kyle. And I think both scenarios are from the Path of the Serpent. So I think it's like the newest expansion, which isn't that new, but uh, the latest one, or maybe the last one even. Uh, let's check actually. But yeah, thank you all for watching. Thanks for, thanks, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for seeing what's in the box. Uh, yeah, so tomorrow we're playing from the Path of the Serpent into the dark. Uh, then the next live stream is on Sunday. We're playing Shots in the Dark, which is from Dead, in the, Dead of the Night, I think. Dead of the Night expansion for Arkham Horror 3rd Edition, the board game. Then on Tuesday, we have Kyle joining us to play three-player uh, for uh, the Jungle Awakens playthrough. So we're playing two-player into the dark. Two-player Shots in the Dark. Whoa, yeah. Into the Dark, Shots in the Dark, The Jungle Awakens. And then I'll schedule a solo playthrough of Arkham Horror, the card game, Night of the Zealot with the revised core set. And I don't know how many episodes or if we just do that all in one long stream, I'm not sure. Uh, but we'll just play it, play it as it goes and uh, schedule it as needed. Uh, so look for that probably on Wednesday or Thursday of next week. Um, but yeah. So that's what's coming up. And if you're looking for anything else on the channel Arkham related, uh, I suggest hitting up the playlist section. And you can find lots of playthrough playlists of campaigns, legacy games, one-off playthroughs, Euro games, all this kind of stuff. Solo playthroughs, multiplayer playthroughs, you know, seven-player playthroughs of Game of Thrones board game second edition if you're looking for that. You know, whatever you want. It's all there. Uh, yeah. Uh, Velko's, Velko's living in Terranoth. No, no living in Arkham. All good. It's all good. Anyways, thank you all for watching. Thanks again for our Patreons, YouTube members for the support. Thanks for everyone hanging out. Make sure you hit that like button. Helps the channel grow. Uh, and if you're looking to support the channel, links are down in the video description. And any of the info about any things I talked about should be down there in the video description. Uh, but yeah, thanks all for watching. I'll see you in the next stream. Bye-bye.